Hello all, welcome back. And today's lecture is on sinusoidal modeling. And now that you know all you need to know about the graphs of sine and cosine, it's uh, it's time to start looking at some problems to put these into, into play. And these are really very cool problems, and uh, we'll look at one here just to give you some idea of how you how you approach it, but there's lots of these, and uh, it does show you how the sinusoidal curve is present in everything that we do. Okay, so here goes. So take a few minutes and read this, press pause, and make sure that you get all the important information out of it, and then we'll look at how it works. So, here is how I parse this information. The diameter of the wheel is 18 feet. The highest it ever goes out of the water is 16 feet. And so that tells you it has to go 2 feet into the water, which makes sense because otherwise it wouldn't be it wouldn't be pushing the boat along. So what that's telling us essentially is that the range of this function, the values for h, go from minus 2 to 16. And what that means is the amplitude is equal to 9 and furthermore the vertical shift is plus 7. Alright, so that's a lot of information that you can extract just from reading that and making sure that you follow it close closely. So let's go on now and figure out uh, what we get from the uh, period of this function. So we're told that uh, the uh, revolution takes 10 seconds. And if a revolution takes 10 seconds, then that means that the period is equal to 10. Furthermore, we're told that when um, the stopwatch read 4 seconds, the point is at its highest, 16 feet. In other words, h of 4 is equal to 16. And we actually have enough information right now to begin uh, graphing this function. So we'll graph it, and then we'll come up with the equation for it. So here's how I set this up to begin with. We know that 4 is a critical value because at 4 seconds we're told that it is at its highest point, which is 16. We also know that from 4 to 14 is 10 seconds, which is the period. So that in that uh, 10 seconds from here to here, it is back at the top again. So I know that that point has to be true. Now halfway between these must be the lowest point. And halfway between 4 and 14 is um, 9, right? So at 9 seconds, it's got to be at its lowest point, which is minus 2. And then halfway between those points, which aren't so nice, it's right at the midline. And so what we have is the graph that looks something like that. Alright, so now let's write down what the function is. So the first thing to notice is that this is best described as a cosine graph. Cosine starts at the top and goes down and then goes back to the top again. We have a horizontal shift, 4 to the right. We have a vertical shift, 7 up. And uh, remember now, we're told that the period is 10. Well, we know that when we fill in our our uh, sinusoid, 2 pi over b has got to equal the period, which we know is 10, and that implies that b is equal to pi over 5. So now we have it all, and uh, I think I'll just squeeze it in right at the bottom here. So h of t, the height, is equal to 9, the amplitude, times the cosine function, pi over 5, that's b, times t minus 4, because we have a shift 
4 to the right plus 7. That's our vertical shift. And there, my friends, is the equation that tells you how high that point on the paddle uh, wheel is at any particular time t. So this would be a good time to put that function, to put this function into your calculator. Instead of t, you'll have to use x. And graph it and see that you do get the shape that you see directly above you. All right, so now let's answer some of the other questions. So the next couple of questions do require that you use a calculator. And the question is, how, uh, how high above the surface is it at 17 seconds? So it's essentially asking us what each of 17 is. And if you plug that in using your calculator, you get a number about 4.21. 885. Always remember to include units, and that would be feet. Uh, then the next question is an interesting one. What's the first positive value of time at which the point was at the water's surface? In other words, h of t is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do, and I would enter this into the calculator I'm using is an Inspire, and I would say solve h of t equals 0 and I'm cheating here because I would have to type in the whole thing for h of t but I'm not going to do that solve h of t equals 0 comma t now if I were to press enter there I would get those answers that you get on your calculator that are very hard to read so what I want to do is make sure that I restrict my values of t. And the way I do that is I use the such that key and I put a little range in here for t. So it's only going to give me the values between 0 and 4. And once I solve that, what I see is that t is equal to 0 0.08 blah 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 seconds. So very very shortly after the stopwatch was clicked was the wheel the point at the surface and now if you look at the um, the graph and you see that at that point essentially if I just do a little bit of a picture we're doing this and so that means that we're coming out of the water not going into it and we get that by examining the graph. So that's an interesting problem. At least I think it's interesting. Hopefully you do too. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just leave you with another one. And uh, it'll be fun for you to try to practice it and see what you think of it. So let's hold on here. So take a few minutes and read this. And, you know, pause. Make sure you get all the important information. And... Rather than talk you through this, I'll simply put the answer up. So press pause, and when you think you have everything done, uh, press play again, and we'll see how you did. Okay? Okay, so away we go. And uh, I generally begin these by first trying to come up with the graph. So here's what we know. We know that the minimum is 200. And the maximum is 800. And so halfway between there is 500. And that's kind of like our midline. We know that 2.9 is an important number. Because that's when we first have a minimum. And we know that 5.1 is an important number because that's when we first have a maximum and so from here to here is 2.2 and so from here to the next point is 2.2 which brings us to 7.3 which is where we have a minimum again and so the graph looks something like this now what graph is that? well if we start here here and go up, that's the graph of minus cosine. 
So the graph is minus cos. We see that the period from here to here is 4.4. 4. 4.4 4. 4. and so that means that 2 pi over b is equal to 4.4 4, which means b is equal to pi over 2.2 2. and we also recognize that we have a horizontal shift of 2.9 to the right we notice that the amplitude from 500 up to 800 or 500 down to 200 the amplitude is 300 and the vertical shift is up 500 and so that's enough to get everything right so we can say that the number of foxes, n of t, is equal to minus, minus cosine, minus 300 times the cosine of pi over 2.2 .2 times t minus 2.9 plus 500. And that's the equation. Okay, let's answer the next questions. Next two questions, we use our calculator. We get n of 7 should be around, check it out, 227 foxes. And we want to know when is this function... Um, between uh, less than 300 and so if you look at the graph if we figure out when is n of t equal to 300 under the condition that let's say t is between 0 and 5 we get that t has to be between 2.31 years and 3.49 years and that's when the population goes below 300 and so there you go. And those are just two types of problems that we deal with that are modeled by sinusoidal curves. There are lots of others, and I'm sure that your teacher will present them to you. So have fun with them. See you later. Bye.